your policy and collateral management. This we presented by the Bank of Slovenia. Um, I will be here with you. My name is Matija Charman. Uh, I'm covering the central banking area, the central uh, center in finance. And uh, to, together with, uh, with us, we will have uh, Ms. Civka Ferjacic from the Bank of Slovenia and also uh, Mr. Martin Podgornik from the Bank of Slovenia. Uh, there are other colleagues who, we, who are supporting uh, this webinar um, uh, at the EF, uh, so Simona Blazeska, who will be um, also you, uh, should you have some uh, information, uh, some, uh, some technical difficulties, uh, or, or also uh, Gregor uh, on the side of the IT. Um, before we start, I will go uh, a little bit of a, through a technical details and what is uh, waiting uh, for us. Um, today, uh, how we will go about it. Um, and um, here, although it is a webinar, it is a presentation based, uh, it is very much um, very encouraged that you also pose your questions um, either at the end of the presentation, which is dedicated for questions and answers, um, and uh, you can uh, unmute yourself and um, ask a question. Or you can do so on the screen. You will see uh, on the bottom uh, right corner uh, also a chat box where you can write your questions. Um, of course, bo both is uh, possible. If you have a question and you want to write it down, we will read it for you as well. Um, it's it's preferable if you ask it uh, yourself, but however. Um, um, I like to notify everyone that this uh, webinar is recorded. Uh, it is then used. Uh, you will uh, pay, uh, you will get the uh, recording after the webinar when it's done, after the, with the presentation. So this will be available for you. Uh, before we go into the webinar, I would like to say because uh, today we have quite a lot of participants that do not know us uh, yet so much. Um, so um, uh, I have to present very briefly about the CEF, uh, seeing the, an international organization support capacity development in Southeast Europe, um, capacity development of the um, public sector. The, um, they have uh, se uh, several areas that we are covering that the financial management within this, it's by budget preparation and execution, accounting and auditing, um, on tax policy and administration, um, and the central banking uh, area, uh, which is also uh, the part uh, the, this webinar is part of. Um, current thematic is uh, a leadership for supporting managing reforms. Um, this, will, this is uh, embedded into, into all of our um, uh, areas as well. Um, we uh, know that on, not only technical knowledge is not enough, so this is why we are also um, this through, through, our, uh, through our initiatives. Um, we have those face-to-face -face initiatives, where uh, webinars are the online part, um, uh, you actually applied uh, through our CF online campus. You will be uh, you on the CF online campus. You can um, um, find also other other things that, that are going on. But however, um, uh, you're welcome to join us at our uh, physical events face to face, either CF or in the region. Um, where uh, we have workshops, seminars, and other other events. Um, uh, so, 
uh, banking area um, is supported by the Bank of uh, Bank Slovenia. It is covering four basic uh, uh, focuses that we have on um, building strong and credible institutions, on um, also uh, supporting the decision making and policy making process with with better information that is with with more political uh, topics. Um, uh, on a developed financial and economic environment, this is the supportive environment for for the economy. And uh, on the sound and resilient financial system, that, that is also the stability on microprudential regulation, supervision, and the like. Uh, I would like to um, 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 direct you also to the website where you can read more um, and also find the uh, central banking brochure uh, where you find uh, who we are working with and um, in a way. Um, so let's see what is uh, way for us today. Um, to our, um, now the first phase of the opening and the introduction. Um, now we will go uh, briefly. In, uh, we will go very shortly in uh, in the first part of the webinar. The webinar is consisted of two parts: of eligible assets for the Eurosystems credit operations and the collateral management operations at the Bank of Slovenia. Um, that is. Um, each of the parts will then be um, followed by the questions and answers, uh, as I said. There were 10 minutes dedicated for that. Uh, and uh, we will be waiting and very much eager to hear your uh, not questions, but maybe your experience and, and comments as well. Um, there are two experts that are with us. This uh, first will be. Silka, uh, so Silka uh, uh, um, is has uh, extensive experience in collateral management uh, and uh, has been working in the, uh, on monetary policy operations for a longer time. Um, so this is where I would li like to leave off. Uh, we are starting with the first phase of the webinar and uh, Simona, if you could uh, also uh, give the presenting rights to to Tsilika. Thank you. Uh, Would you unmute? Okay. 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 Do you hear me, Mattia? Start. Uh, yeah. Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, as, as as it was said by Mattia, I will cover the first part uh, that will deal with uh, eligible assets. Assets, and afterwards, my colleague Martin will cover the collateral management operations at the Bank of Slovenia. The first part will mainly focus on the eligibility criteria for marketable and non-marketable assets. And of course, uh, we will also have time for questions and discussions, and at the end, there will be uh, some guidelines for the outlook uh, in the future. So the uh, first part, it's about the eligible assets for the Eurosystem credit operations. As quite a lot of participants are for the central banks, I guess this topic will be of the most important for those who intend to join the Euro area, but also for the others, for those who want to get some more uh, knowledge about the collateral management. As we know, the collateral management is a base for the for operations that run through the monetary policy, 
and are important, especially uh, it has proven in the past that cultural management played uh, a quite crucial role in, in the financial crisis. So important to get some basic knowledge about uh, collateral management in the euro system, and maybe you can compare it uh, also with your system in the central banks. Uh, as far as I know, there are also some participants from the Minister of Finance. Also, for them, these topics could be uh, quite interesting because it's good to have awareness that your debt instruments are eligible, and what of the eligibility criteria need to be fulfilled uh, in order to get uh, the assets uh, this status of eligibility. Not for the securities, because the securities are the most used, but also for other debt obligations like for the credit claims, because there are quite some specifics that you need to take into account when you are issuing a new debt. So welcome all the central bankers and also other participants to have a look in this area of collateral management of the euro system. Uh, things, of course, we need to know that all liquidity provided credit operations are based on adequate collateral. This is uh, uh, written down in the statute of the Euro system central banks of the all EU central banks. Uh, so this is the basis that without collateral, you should not give credit uh, to the commercial banks. And uh, uh, deciding on the eligible S that you need to take into account some guiding principles. Uh, here are some of them, the most important ones. Of course, the first one is a protection. That's why we, we want to get collateral so that uh, the central bank is protected against losses. Then the second one is the smooth uh, conduct of monetary policy. Uh, because if you don't have enough eligible assets, uh, you cannot really do your monetary policy, especially, let's say, in a, in a time of financial crisis or when the banks are more in need for, for the liquidity. Uh, the smooth conduct of monetary policy is important. Because the collateral management should ensure the equal treatment, equal treatment among parties, among issuers or receptors, and it should provide operational efficiency and transparency. So we want to be uh, tr transparent. Uh, uh, that's why all the eligibility criteria are known to the general public and they are published in our guidelines. The ECS guidelines are the legal base for, for the collateral management of the euro system. And the most important guideline is this guideline, the first one that is mentioned here, a guideline on the implementation of the euro system monetary policy. As uh, you know, this is the guideline that covers also eligible counterparties and the operations. And of course, in part four, there are all the details about eligibility and the assets that we are taking into uh, in consideration when we are uh, doing the operations. And, uh, there is another guideline that should be mentioned. Uh, this is the guideline that deals with the risk control measures and it defines the evolution haircut and is also publicly known, and both of guidelines are published on the ECB website, and here you have a link. So if you need more details, maybe afterwards or any time, you can go to the ECB website, and you can find even more details in those two guidelines. And in the Euro system, the guidelines need to be amended in national documentation, so we have also our national documentation that reflected, uh, reflects this these two guidelines and also some national specifics. Uh, eligible assets are divided in two parts. The part are the marketable assets, and the second part of eligible assets are the non-marketable assets. With the marketable assets, we refer to the debt securities, and the list of uh, eligible marketable that securities is daily published on the ECB website. Here is a link where you can get all the licenses of all debt, in, uh, instru debt uh, instruments that are eligible for the operations. And as a rule, uh, the reporting NCB is that NCB where the marketable assets is admitted to trading. 
So uh, it's not the the issue, uh, the location of the issuer. It's the marketable uh, uh, regulated or no regulated markets that uh, defines which SCB uh, has the responsibility to report these eligible assets to the ECB. On a daily basis, the NCBs, national central banks, uh, look at the criteria and if the new assets of course, they need to report it to the ECB, and at the end of the day, the, the common file is published at the ECB website via ISINs and also some other details of the debt securities. So in this table, you have the main criteria that are used for the marketable assets. Uh, there are some specifics, uh, of course, in details uh, described in the guidelines, but uh, for today's presentation, I think it's important to have, uh, to have a general view and to go through the main criteria. First of all, the assets need to be a debt instrument, so we accept only debt instruments, not equities. Uh, it should have an unconditional principal amount uh, and acceptable uh, coupon structures. Uh, the coupon structure, structures need to be simple, not a complex one. Uh, there should be no subordination. No subordination of the rights is important, so uh, if we are case that we need to realize the, the assets, we need to be the first one to, to be repaid. Uh, the currency needs to be the euro, the of the issue uh, should be the issue. Uh, the place of the issue should be Euro European Economic Area. Uh, it's a bit done, and the settlement needs to be done in the euro area, the eligible security settlement systems in a book entry forum. As in the beginning, uh, the NCB, uh, where the regulated markets uh, is placed, is responsible for the reporting. And we take uh, the regulated markets and some non-regulated markets that are accepted by the ECB. And when I refer to the non-regulated markets, there is a list published on the ECB website. And uh, only those markets that fulfill a certain criteria are eligible. And when we are uh, assessing the markets, we take into account the, uh, the access the transparency and the safety of uh, the infrastructure that is offered, and then the market could be listed uh, as the accepted one. The issue and the grantor uh, could be either central banks or public sector entities, private sector, international organizations, so it's quite a, a big variety of sectors that we take into account. And either the EU or the grantor needs to be eligible. Establishment uh, needs to be in the European economic area, but also uh, it could be out in the one of the non EEA G10 countries, but let's say like uh, uh, a Canadian or US issuer. But in that case, we need a legal assessment so that the euro system is properly protected. So, we need a legal assessment of, the, of this uh, asset stock uh, that we can take in then as a collateral. And the important criteria is the credit quality requirements. The issuer or the issue need, or even the grantor need to have a rating threshold uh, at the triple B minus. Uh, we accept the different rating agency like uh, Fitch, uh, uh, S&P, uh, DRS, and Moody's. Those are four main uh, rating agency that we accept when we are looking uh, if the assets is eligible or not. And the rating threshold is a bit higher for the assets backed securities because you now that there are more complex uh, instruments and so the, even the requirements for the rating is higher. In the ECB guideline, you have a special section where there are more in Indeed, uh, there, there are more uh, eligible criteria for covered bonds and for uh, ABSs uh, when there are some other detailed criteria that the NCB sh uh, sh uh, need to take into account when assessing the eligibility of the instrument. About the securities, so the securities are assessed by the national center banks and are published at the ECB website. And any commercial bank that is interested 
the state could check there and see if the asset is eligible or not. Of course, and there is another quite very important uh, uh, part of the eligible assets. It is called non-marketable assets. The non-marketable assets uh, mainly consist of the credit claims. With credit claims, we mean a loan uh, uh, when the when the loan is granted to a eligible debtor. The claim needs to be a debt obligation. There should be a fixed, unconditional, and principal amount and acceptable simple coupon structure. And of course, also here there should be no subordination of rights. The currency needs to be euro and. Uh, type of debtor or grantor should be mainly non-financial corporation because we don't accept loans that are given to another financial uh, institution because otherwise we would be exposed to the financial sector. So this criteria, non-financial uh, sector, is important when we are uh, uh, thinking about the credit claims as eligible assets. And the governing law of the credit claim agreement and the governing law of the mobilization should be the area area law, but some additional laws could be uh, accepted regarding, let's say, the creditor, the uh, the guarantor, or some other. So uh, a maximum three laws could be accepted. And we are taking credit claims as collateral. We could uh, oppose a threshold. Uh, with threshold, I mean the limit up to which uh, uh, amount uh, of each uh, credit claim we take uh, as collateral. And there is a minimum threshold of 500,000 uh, euros uh, per credit claim for the cross border use. But for national center banks, it's up to them whether they decide to have a threshold or not. In Slovenia, we use the same threshold because we think it's quite costly to use a small credit claims because uh, you need to assess whether the credit claim is eligible or not, and we don't want to have quite a lot of costs with this. So it's quite good to have at least a minimum threshold. The debtor uh, or guarantor of a credit claim should be uh, an euro era. So here is a bit uh, 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 more restricted in, in the securities, uh, 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 but of course it's good to have just euro laws. Uh, as we know that the credit claims uh, are not harmonized in the euro era and there are some differences and uh, we don't want to go really into details of the each jurisdiction. So euro area uh, is, the, is the location that is required. And we're taking credit claims as a collateral, we need to assess also additional legal requirements. This is quite important for those who issue a debt, let's say, uh, that should take care about these uh, additional legal requirements. First is the verification of the credit claim existence. The verification is done in the way that uh, we need to check if the credit claims really exist. So in the Euro system, the national central banks do the ex post checks. With the ex post checks, we mean that we go to the bank and uh, it's a, an on-site visit, and we need to really uh, check if the existence of credit, the existence of credit claims, uh, and we do just a random a sample uh, uh, of checks. And, uh, validity of mobilization needs to be fulfilled with validity of mobilization. I refer to the all uh, legal acts in a specific in a jurisdiction. So uh, the mobilization needs to have also a full effect with uh, third parties. Uh, of course, we know that when we take uh, credit claims as collateral, it's not the same like a security. You need to trust the counterparty that the credit claim really exists. You need to trust to the data that the counterparty is sending to you. And you need to trust to the legal uh, system in the jurisdiction that the, all rights uh, are pr protected and you as a collateral taker are first in the role in case of uh, realization. 
that's why also in the credit claim agreements, there should be no restriction regarding the mobilization or realization of an asset. And let's say if you are getting, you are preparing a, a, a loan agreement, you should take uh, care about it and not to put any restriction for the mobilization and realization. With the mobilization, we, we refer to the um, as when the counterparty brings this credit claim to us as collateral, and uh, uh, we use pledge uh, system here in Slovenia. So when the uh, credit claim is pledged, uh, it means it's mobilized. And with the realization, we, think, we mean the expression uh, uh, means that uh, in, in case of counterparties default, we need to realize the assets, we need to sell it and uh, to get the money back. So there should be no restriction regarding the realization in, in the loan agreement. And of course, because we need to share the data uh, with the euro system, there should be no banking secrecy. Uh, and if there is, according to some special uh, jurisdiction, banking secrecy uh, often is there in the different legal acts. In uh, credit card agreement, the banking secrecy in case of uh, uh, using this credit claim as collateral should not be there. And of course, the important uh, eligibility criteria is the credit quality requirement. This is the rating requirement uh, that should be at least triple minus, or even we use other uh, credit quality source, uh, credit quality sources uh, uh, instead of the rating. Probability of default can be used as a measure uh, of uh, credit uh, assessment of the debtor. Uh, some more words about the credit quality requirements. I will tell you later about the different sources that we use, but uh, this is now. Uh, all uh, about the non-marketable assets, the main criteria that one needs to think of uh, when using credit claims as collateral. And at the end of the slides, there is also a background slide uh, when the collateral uh, uh, system of the euro system is compared with other central banks, so you can use it later, or if we have time, you can see it at the end. You see that not just the euro system, but also some other central banks use credit claims. Uh, that during the financial crisis, uh, some other central banks started to use credit claim as as a, as, a, as a collateral because if there is a need and if there is a need for liquidity and the banks don't have enough security, this could be quite a good solution that you can take into account. Have uh, procedures for the securities. We know that the settlement of the security is well known. There is no doubt that the banks can use them. But uh, regarding the non-marketable assets, there are no such infrastructure in place. So each national central banks need to have its own infrastructure, and that's why some procedures need to be. Uh, uh, need to be in place prior of the use of the credit claims. First thing that we need to do is one-off verification. With one-off verification, uh, we refer to the verification of procedures uh, in the central bank. Uh, we go to the uh, commercial bank, we look at the internal procedures, uh, and we look if they understand well the eligibility criteria. In if the, if the bank is really prepared to use the credit claims. And this one one verification can be done even by the bank department or supervisors or some national center banks also use auditors. So this one of verification, uh, the test is needed to be done. We test our uh, uh, IT application. Uh, I said here is a non-harmonized approach in the euro system. So in national center bank use it's, it's obligation when the banks uh, really uh, uh, bring uh, to us uh, credit claims as collateral. And after successful uh, test, the counterparty is ready to use credit claims. 
about the first mobilization, the counterparty needs to select the Eurosystem credit assessment uh, uh, framework main source. And in the next slide, I will explain about this ECAF uh, source. And afterwards, of course, the mobilization and demobilization can take place. And during the year, on a quarterly basis, the, basis, the counterparty need to self-certificate uh, the, the data and need to provide us a self-certification that the data are accurate. So at least a quarterly, the banks need to go through the data and really uh, approve that the data are uh, appropriate one and uh, the correct one. Otherwise, we can uh, impose sanctions. It's a complicated uh, process, but anyway, it's so when banks can you get used to it, uh, it's it's good if it is uh, IT su supported and it's quite an easy for them to to bring to us credit claims as collateral. We also have some manual work because we check all the credit claims, but national central banks don't do it because the biggest uh, uh, central banks, of course, have a huge patch of credit claims that are given as collateral, and uh, it's impossible to go through the credit claims and check the criteria. But here, as the small central banks, we do it, uh, and it's not such a burden. We go through the credit claims to see if all the eligibility criteria are checked, and uh, those checks are done ex post after, after the mobilization. Earlier, uh, I will also refer to this Eurosystem credit assessment framework. This credit assessment framework is uh, important because the, the debtor needs to have an appropriate rating, or uh, as I said, probability of default instead of rating uh, should be uh, at the appropriate level. Uh, the probability of default in the horizon of one year should be up to 0.40%. So uh, at that level, the, the debtor uh, or the guarantor is eligible. Uh, quite uh, varieties of uh, ratings that can be used. Here are four sources available. First one are the external credit assessment institutions. With these uh, institutions, we refer to the credit uh, rating agencies. As I said earlier, we accept four credit rating agencies, and those the agencies are mainly the most important ones for, for the credit assessment of the debtors and guarantors. Uh, we have a National Central Bank's in-house credit assessment systems so-called ICA systems. Uh, not all of the national central banks have uh, uh, this system, but the Bank of Slovenia is one among them. Currently, there are 10 national central banks with ICA system, and this is uh, like a small credit institution, uh, a small rating institution, I would say, because we give ratings to the non-national uh, entities. Our case, our supervisors are involved in this ICA system. They are assessing the, the non-financial corporations and they are giving the so-called uh, uh, assessment through the probability of defaults as a measure. And those who have the lowest probability of default, of course, are the most uh, uh, good adapters. And uh, counterparties get the list of eligible uh, debtors uh, assessed through the ICA system. The fourth are the rating-based systems. Rating-based systems are those of the commercial banks, and they are used for other purposes uh, and uh, can be used also for the collateral. And there are also so-called uh, third-party providers is uh, as rating tools, but at the moment there are just two rating tools in the Euro system, and they are not so important. For us, uh, an important criteria is the additional criteria, so-called public sector entity rule. This is the criteria that says that the uh, rating can be uh, uh, derived from the government, from the central government, also for the public sector entity. Uh, some entities have the same rating as central government, and some have uh, one credit quality step lower. 
So we, we as the Bank of Slovenia, we also publish a so-called PSE list of the entities that have uh, a sufficient rating, sufficient level, uh, sufficient level for the collateral, uh, for the collateral that they can use. And for our banks, this PSE uh, list is quite important one because they have, we have quite a lot of debtors from the public sector. Uh, complicated your system credit assessment framework, but anyway, it has been proven that in the past, when the banks were in need of uh, the liquidity and were in need of more collateral, this credit assessment framework worked well, and still it is in, the, in place. Maybe the rating tools are not import, so important, and we should uh, be aware that, of course, still uh, till now the rating agencies are the most important source used. And uh, if you look at the securities, the securities need to have a rating uh, of the rating agencies, but for the credit claims, other sources can be used. So this uh, assessment of framework is uh, more in favor of uh, non-marketable, for the more non-marketable assets. With assets, then given at the central bank, we need to do the risk control measure and valuation. Uh, we do the risk control measures and valuation on a daily basis. Uh, we do the valuation for the securities. As you know, we use the market prices. In the case of the market price is not available, we use the theoretical price. It's quite a similar case when also other, other commercial banks use it for the valuation. Uh, we have a special uh, uh, system for uh, giving theoretical price. It was developed by the two national central banks and it has been used now for quite a long time. At the beginning, when we entered the euro area, we had our own theoretical uh, uh, model, but now a common model is used for all the euro system, and this is the best solution. For credit claims, we know that there is no market price, so we use outstanding nominal amounts without interest. So just the principle is used when we are evaluating the credit claims. On a daily basis, we need to apply different uh, haircuts because we lower uh, the value with this haircut so that we are on the same side. And uh, we also use uh, um, margin calls if needed. Mar margin calls are referred to the situation where the, when uh, value falls below uh, a certain level, usually before, below uh, credit operation in this case we need to ask the counterparty to bring us additional assets or cash to, to have all the credit operations covered. And one, one risk control measure that we use uh, is also uh, mentioned here, the fourth one, close links and concentration limits. Those links we refer to direct or indirect uh, capital link between uh, two entities. Because if the counterparty has an ownership uh, in, in the issuer, then it's not good to have such assets here because we are exposed to the both counterparties or the EU and the counterparty that is bringing us an asset. So that's why we have a, 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 a control measure of no close links allowed. And we also put some limits for unsecured bank debt instruments because we don't want to be exposed uh, uh, too much to the banking sector. So when the counterpart is using unsecured debt instruments, there are some limits. Uh, to certain limits, they can use it. But for bonds, because we know that there are some assets behind the bond, there are, there are no limits, and for ABSs as well. So main risk control measures that we use and we daily evaluate uh, the collateral and of course this is the main collateral then, then we have here in the euro system. But in the past there was a need for additional uh, assets, that's why the ECB also allowed to use just temporary, but this temporary a period is still here, uh, so we use also some other assets uh, 
uh, because the banks were really in need to have uh, more assets available for, for the euro system operations. Uh, These temporary eligible assets were crucial in in uh, financial crisis, but also afterwards because we were giving banks more credits through the longer term operations. We know because of so-called QU program, a quantitative easing program, we offered the banks more operations with longer terms. So that's why we 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 set also a temporary eligible framework. So we accept also non-euro denominated debt instruments, just some of them. I won't go into details, and we accept some additional uh, ABSs and short-term securities, those that are not listed on the uh, regulated markets, because we know that for short-term securities, usually it's a practice not to be listed, and we accept some additional credit claims where rating is put a bit lower than for the regular framework. So additional temporary eligible assets are still here, but uh, probably in the future, when we are thinking about the future framework, uh, those assets will go out of our common list. Some data about the euro system collateral that is used. On the left side, you have uh, eligible marketable assets, and you can see that uh, uh, in the structure of eligible marketable assets, the government assets are the most important, have the bigger share. Those are the blue ones. Uh, the government, of course, uh, uh, it's important, the government assets, but also some other assets uh, play quite a crucial role in the eligible uh, assets uh, of the euro system. Right, we have a use of collateral. Uh, with the use of collateral, we refer to the all assets that are pledged in favor of the euro system. And we see that not just government bonds, the share here is much lower, but also our assets are more and more important. And if you look at this uh, dark uh, red uh, part, you see that credit claims are recently becoming more important assets type uh, because the credit claims now represent nearly uh, a quarter of all assets pledged. So we need to take care of this assets class and really be focused on the risk control measures because they are becoming more and more important important in the collateral use. One reason why credit claims are becoming more important uh, for the euro system term counterparties is that other assets like government securities are more used for other purposes. They are used on the repo market, but uh, the thing that is becoming uh, crucial now, the government assets are more important for the liquidity regulation. And the banks need to have uh, quite a lot of government assets for the liquidity regulation, they are more motivated to bring to the euro system other assets because for the liquidity regulation, the assets need to be encumbered. So pledged. Uh, that's why that we see the trend that less uh, government assets are used uh, for the purpose of the credit operations, uh, and we need to think also in the future that we follow the liquidity regulation. If something changes there, we need to take into account and uh, we need to predict the influences on the counterparty's behavior. In the previous slide, there was uh, a graph of collateral used uh, in the euro system, but here you have two graphs of collateral used in uh, different jurisdictions, in Slovenia and in G. You can see that in Slovenia, the counterparties mostly used uh, uh, government bonds and credit claims. Government bonds and credit claims are the most uh, important assets that are used uh, 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 from our counterparties. But uh, in some other jurisdictions, other more so sophisticated, I would say more sophisticated assets are used because in Slovenia uh, we don't have any cover bonds on ABS issues. 
uh, and also unsecured uh, bonds are not so important because nowadays uh, counterparties are, are getting the financing through the central banking operations, so they don't really issue new bonds. But if you look at uh, uh, the situation in Germany, you will see that the uncovered, this uh, green part, uncovered bank bonds and also covered bonds, this uh, orange part, are quite important for the German counterparties. So comparing different jurisdictions, you will see different patterns of collateral use, and uh, this is, uh, uh, of course, a practice that we, that we need to take into consideration when we are looking what will be the influences if we change some criteria, because for some jurisdictions could be very important, for the others not so. Uh, also, we are thinking about the future collateral system. Uh, we need to refer to all uh, jurisdictions and different patterns of collateral used among different uh, uh, Euro area members. Just uh, a few words about the future collateral system. Uh, we know that nowadays we are operating the monetary policy in excess liquidity. So maybe the collateral is not so important at the moment, but uh, for the future situations, we need to assess what kind of the post-crisis framework do we want to have. Uh, recently, uh, we are working internally on some, uh, on some options of the post-crisis framework of operations of monetary policy and, of course, of collateral as well, because it depends what kind of operations we will have in the future, and it depends in which environment we are going to, to have our monetary policy in a surplus or deficit, uh, then this one will also uh, uh, influence the decision on the lateral management. For sure, we should think about less complex system because there are quite a lot of arguments that the euro system collateral management is too complex and sometimes even for the counterparties too difficult to understand all the detailed uh, criteria uh, it should be more transparent we want to uh, to be transparent uh, uh, towards the counterparties and the general public to the issuers and debtors all the criteria need to be clear and there are some challenges if operation based on different different collateral would be needed. This is just an example. We don't know, but it could happen in the future. So we need to take into account uh, also this option in case it would be needed. But of course, everything depends on the post-crisis framework of the monetary policy operations, and then together also the collateral management. And one important uh, step in the future is also IT infrastructure. The EU system is uh, working currently on the Euro system common infrastructure, so-called ECMS project, and uh, my colleague will tell you a bit more about it. It's uh, about IT infrastructure that will be used uh, among uh, Euro area members because it's better to have a common infrastructure than a separate ones and because there is more risk and it's more costly to, to have a separate according to the different jurisdictions. And it's all from my side. <laughs> I hope it wasn't too complicated or too complex. And uh, I would encourage you to, to comment or to give your views. Uh, uh, maybe you have some good experience with your own collateral management system for those central banks that have a different one. Uh, for those probably who don't have any experience with the credit claims, I would like to hear your opinion uh, if you have any doubts uh, of such uh, eligible assets. So, do comment or ask questions. I can wait a bit. Uh, there is, I think there is no sense to go to the second part uh, immediately, but it's good if there are some things to discuss, it's better to do it now.
Thank you, Tsirka, for your presentation. Uh, indeed, um, I say it's not all from you yet, <laughs> as you said. <laughs> yeah. um, so let's devote maybe a minute uh, uh, to wait now for, uh, for any questions that uh, the participants might have. Um, and uh, again, uh, um, to pose a question, you would need to unmute yourself and uh, um, ask the question so that we can hear you. Um, you have also a, a possibility to write it in the chat box. So, but as, as I said, let's, may, uh, let's wait maybe a minute um, to, to see. Uh, for us, when we entered the Euro area, credit claims were quite a new asset class that we have to deal with. Uh, but through all those years, we get more common uh, with, the, with the criteria and with the operational practice, so we find it quite useful. Uh, any comments, of course, from your side, because I guess that you mostly use uh, securities or maybe central bank bills. Uh, uh, I know the topic is quite specific. So it depends whether you are involved in the collateral management uh, on a daily basis or not. But maybe even for those who are not involved, uh, um, just uh, if you have uh, any doubts or general view of the of the system, it's too complex. Uh, is it too ri is it too risky? I did have a question from Simona, um, and that was more of on the elaboration on uh, the valuation of haircuts. Uh, you actually explained that now it's um, unified across the Euro system. However, maybe you would um, indicate what are the main differences, what, what were, what, what, what did you use before, what are, yeah. yeah. The, when we entered the euro area at that time we don't have uh, we didn't we didn't have a common valuation hub that's why each national center banks need to evaluate the assets uh, separately but of course this is not uh, a good idea because you have also cross border use of assets and you need to have a common single base that's why the euro system established uh, a kind uh, methodology and uh, one center that evaluates all the assets is now in place. It's run by the two national center banks. I offer the prices to all for the eligible assets that are on the list. So we use the same prices in the euro system. Each national center bank uses the prices for the same ISIN. And uh, those haircuts are used to to put us on the safe side because we deduct this haircut, which is expressed in percentages, in percentages, we deduct it from the value so that the value is a bit less than market price so that some other costs are covered, uh, let's say, in case of a need for a realization. But to calculate this uh, haircut is quite uh, uh, a complex thing. So it's from our risk uh, uh, management uh, 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 committee are uh, dealing with it, and they prepare tables of the haircuts that are dependent on the type of the assets, on the maturity, and also on the type of the interest rate. It's a quite complicated methodology uh, that is used, but of course, it is a thing that it gives us more assurance that will be covered in case of the realization. In the meanwhile, we also received another question. Uh, thank you, Gerdana Yordanova, uh, for your uh, for your question. She thank you uh, for the excellent presentation. I agree. Um, and uh, is asking uh, whether the current support regime corresponds to the new collateral management framework uh, in, yeah, uh, in relation to the termination of the cu currency 
report and um, introduction of your currency rate. Uh, of course, uh, we have uh, uh, here uh, a different situation in the in the euro system. But uh, if I compare how we did it in the past, there was uh, a, in central bank before entering the euro area. Uh, I could say that the central management could be in any situation in quite a similar way, because also. So before entering the euro area, uh, we had a system, uh, at that time we have a surplus of, liqui of liquidity, at least of Slovenia, in Slovenia, we had a lot of capital inflows coming into the country, but uh, we had a regime uh, uh, where our monetary policy was dealing with the credit operations as well. And any time when you have credit operations, when you give liquidity to the banks, you need to have appropriate collateral management in place. I would say that this collateral management could be in place in any, in any regime because you need to be uh, protected as a central bank. You should not take risk. And uh, when you are doing credits, of course, you need to have appropriate uh, eligible assets uh, there to be covered. Respectively of the regime, I would say that the common features of the collateral management uh, uh, could be seen in, in any time. Thank you. The question I heard a voice. Um, if, if then I would suggest we continue with the next uh, with the next one um, and uh, with the next part with Martin. We will uh, also tackle the questions you might have in on the first part after the second. So uh, please do share your questions um, and uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, discuss it uh, discuss it later on. Um, and uh, we are already now joined uh, uh, by, uh, <laughs> by uh, Martin. Uh, Martin uh, is actually um, of the back office of, uh, of the banking operations at the Bank of Slovenia. And um, he is also working more on the um, technical side, uh, also on the, on the platform for uh, um, collateral management. Uh, so you will have a, a, a great opportunity to ask him um, more questions. Um, Marty, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, yes, do you hear me? Very well. Okay, very good. Hi, from uh, my side, I'm Martin Podgornik, like uh, Matija introduced me and we'll walk you through the collateral operations at the Bank of Slovenia. First of all, so, uh, I'd like to say that I'm really happy to see a list of such a diverse audience from all uh, kinds of uh, working guests in uh, so many different countries. My part, was already said, is uh, being a bit more technical, so do not hesitate to ask uh, questions, either or um, afterwards via email. I'm sure uh, Mattia will uh, convey the questions uh, to me. The purpose is uh, to provide you with our approach regarding the collateral management that is, of course, accommodated from the Euro system's uh, guidelines and rules. I'm sure your procedures are in place, so don't take my presentation as a lecture, but rather a starting point for a discussion or um, a release to be further explored at, at home so we can um, so, we, uh, so you can uh, uh, develop your uh, system even uh, more. This, uh, let's start with the presentation. I will start with some legal elements, uh, some basic elements of uh, the collateral management operations, and continue of, uh, with the benefits of the pooling system that is in, in the euro system. 
afterwards introduce some business processes and we'll end up with the outlook for the future. So, how are the legal basis in Slovenia incorporated uh, in, uh, from the rules? Slovenia, as a member of the Euro system, must comply with the ECB guidelines. This had to be duly implemented into national legal acts. In our case, um, counterparties uh, had to sign off the general terms and conditions on the implementation of monetary policy framework. And this framework also includes our national specifics. For instance, the maximum pledge, that is uh, the key ingredient of the pooling system, meaning that the pledge does not expire with the operation, but uh, keep going until the, both parties agree, agree to, to delete it. Uh, credit claim registration means uh, that uh, uh, an opportunity to check the register if there is already a pledge on that uh, uh, credit claim. Uh, in short, it, the re register prevents uh, double pledges from uh, uh, the debtors. We also have debtor notifications, but I will not go too much into detail on this one. Okay, now it's on the key elements of the collateral operations. Firstly, the collateral mobilization channels. Um, what is under the mobilization first? These are all procedures and actions that need to be correctly executed in order the central bank is absolutely sure that asset is properly pledged. For instance, with the securities, that the security is firstly settled and most importantly checked, checked afterwards by the central bank and subsequently confirmed um, that the asset has been accepted as a collateral. When everything is made, then we say that collateral has been mobilized, mobilized period. So it's in the pool. Uh, counterpart and uh, uh, ask for credit from the central bank. Now, means we can all name the channels uh, domestic securities uh, are provided to the central bank via uh, the so-called CSDs. Uh, the CSD stands for Central Security Depositor. In Slovenia, this is KDD. Uh, we order securities. Uh, this um, uh, are issued outside Slovenia, but uh, and settled within the eurozone. The common agreement between the NCBs that is put on paper in uh, the correspondent central banking model, the so-called CCBM, and, and basically uh, says that uh, each cent of the Eurozone acts as a custodian for other central banks in its own local market. For instance, Germany acts as a custodian uh, for Slovenia, uh, for Slovenian central bank in um, uh, Germany, and vice versa. Um, we take care of uh, German Central Bank uh, needs uh, in Slovenia. Uh, practice, this means we, we provide uh, Odeon uh, functionalities, we, we, we settle the instructions, we process uh, corporate actions, uh, we deal with potential uh, tax issues, and uh, so forth. The third mobilization channel that we use is for the credit claims. Uh, it's, it's in our case, it's 100% domestic and comprises of completely proprietary operational uh, procedures. I dedicated a slide on the credit claims uh, later on, but also Tilka explained the credit claims uh, uh, well in depth. Okay, let's go to compliance. Or no, we have a cash as collateral and fixed term deposit. Uh, cash as collateral uh, is used only in exchange extreme circumstances. Uh, when margin call is raised, uh, of course, why would somebody deliver cash for cash? But if there, if there is a margin call and we ask urgently to, to, to fill in the, the, the missing collateral, then cash is also accepted. In the past, the monetary policy had not been so loose in the euro system. We also accepted fixed term deposits uh, as collateral, whereby the fixed term deposits uh, uh, had been uh, deposited with a central bank within the monetary fr uh, framework. 
Brussels. Now we really move to, to, to the compliance. I won't explain again what the compliance means. I think, I think uh, Silka explained it uh, really well. I'll just uh, uh, explain some practicalities of uh, a certain um, uh, database. For it, we use the ADB, the, eligibility, the eligible asset database that is publicly accessible on, um, on the uh, website. Why is it uh, practical to use it? Uh, for instance, you don't, need, you, didn't, you don't need to listen to Phil's presentation because uh, uh, you need to really know the eligibility criteria or you check whether the ISIN, this is the International Security Identification Number, is within the database and if it is in, in the database, you know uh, that the uh, security is eligible you can e and you can deliver it to, to, your, to the central bank. Also, cuts are in so you can foresee what the valuation is. Uh, contrary, uh, with the closings, your system also built the uh, register of institution uh, and uh, register of institutions and affiliates database, but but it's not public due to the confiden confidentiality reasons, because not all jurisdictions want to to publish uh, what are the capital uh, connections between the issuer and uh, and the debtors, and um, even with the the the, the database. Uh, Caution is needed uh, because the uh, data can 100% correct due to a reporting lack. So a double check is needed afterwards, uh, even if you uh, find a close link within such a database. Uh, one issue regards the compliance is also the maturity that we also retrieve it from the EADB. Uh, we checked uh, the compliance daily, so it's also quite convenient, convenient to automate it via uh, an external uh, database where uh, the data is structured and you don't need to check the individual uh, records for eligibility daily. We also have limits, but here it's a simple check. Uh, it's 2.5% uh, of all collateral that is delivered to, to the central bank, to the counterparty, of course. Move on. Uh, this was also uh, explained uh, by Silka, so let's just repeat uh, certain uh, key elements. We do it uh, on a daily uh, basis, uh, once per day for a whole collateral, and ad hoc ju during the day if there are if there are mobilization or mobilizations or demobilizations, or if there are some uh, uh, significant changes in the assets attributes, for instance, rating, uh, rating decrease or some other static data changes. Here, um, valuations are uh, persist as a huge interest pool factor for ABS is sector for some specific securities. Foreign exchange um, rate, if the asset is uh, denominated in a foreign currencies, let's uh, say for treasury uh, measures, haircuts, are assigned uh, uh, with a matrix um, per asset type maturity and uh, uh, asset quality, aka rating. And one more thing that I think it's uh, interesting, uh, I know that some non-euro uh, NCBs evaluate uh, assets uh, at zero uh, before the maturity day in the euro system. Uh, we are of the opinion that it is the fairest of the counterparties that we weight uh, the, the assets uh, all collateral at the very maturity day, date, but then entails that uh, you have to have 100 uh, data and that the redemptions are paid uh, directly to you, so you don't end up without uh, money and with the credit exposures towards the counterparty. Um, let's move to the core protections. By core protections, uh, the redemptions and uh, interest rates for, for um, this at, uh, uh, oh, sorry, uh, redemptions and coupons of the interest uh, for securities and interest uh, in for claims. Uh, interest are usually paid or always paid. Uh, by the debtor to the to the bank, and for redemptions and uh, coupons are paid by the issuer. 
uh, all now we apply to the so-called Christmas tree model, so they are paid uh, to, to to the CSD. CSD pays the uh, 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 the, the, the redemptions and coupons to the first and members to the final beneficiary. So, uh, for the creditor, did we differentiate the the treatment of uh, the corporate actions for securities and credit claims? Uh, for securities, we always get the, the redemptions and the, the coupons, and we forward them to, to counterparties uh, in no margin call. Of, if everything's fine, we, we, we forward them immediately within the same business day to, to the counter, to counterparty. Um, for uh, credit claims, it's a bit different. Take on board the, the interest uh, for the uh, collateral value. So don't we, we don't need to uh, interfere uh, in the, the payments of interest from the debtor to, to, to the bank or to the counterparty. Okay, so my corporate actions. Uh, last slide about the key elements, and then I think the, the, uh, the presentation will be if interesting, at least more colorful. Um, with additional fees for collateral management, uh, for instance, we don't uh, add uh, anything on safekeeping fees that are charged to us by the CSDs and the for BDs. We only pass on uh, the variable costs uh, that are charged to us by um, CSD and uh, foreign NCBs, like transaction costs, safekeeping fees, and other minor um, items. We also do reporting. We have to be fully transparent, uh, first to management, but also to other uh, NCBs, the other central banks that we share financial risk, risks uh, together. So we need to know or to be aware what central banks uh, are doing and so uh, that we can ask questions if necessary. We report the positions to, uh, to the ECB and ECB then disseminates uh, such uh, this uh, information to all uh, banks. So we, we get the information from all the euro systems to us. Unfortunately, uh, here is uh, what do we report to counterpart parties? We report aggregate values and also individual positions with collateral position valuation. Uh, now, what uh, what percentage amount of collateral will mature uh, if the maturity date is near report uh, the collateral twice a day um, firstly in the morning when we do the revaluation this is before business uh, uh, start of business uh, day so that uh, counterparties know uh, with what collateral they can work with uh, during the, the day and we also report the collateral at the end of the day to read quantities and uh, face amounts and outstanding uh, positions for claims uh, so that uh, parties can reconcile their uh, their positions or their books with our our data which practice or practically obligatory uh, issue for a, a back office uh, process uh, I would like to mention a few words on uh, e-marking uh, versus pooling. Uh, there was no bet between them, but pooling is deemed as an operation upgrade from earmarking, uh, at least in the euro systems. Why the earmarking system had been happening uh, in the, the euro system, but it had uh, some um, uh, sides. I said uh, few of them. Uh, I'm sure that some uh, problems can be solved also within the earmarking, but then the pooling has been established uh, in the euro system as a system to run by the all the, by all central banks. So one one loan demands exact set of collateral. This is practically a definition of the earmarking. Each operation is earmarked to uh, a certain uh, uh, collateral to a certain uh, IV or security. Or, or set of securities. Lateral cannot be rolled over for the next operations. Uh, there was a legal requirement, requirement that, uh, let's, let's say for a repo, the, uh, there is a date 
on uh, the, the the collateral provided all can uh, is issued per operation so there can be many uh, margin calls our collateralization at one collateral set cannot be transferred to another meaning that you have, if you have an over collateralization at uh, one operation and under collateralization at another this a surplus uh, cannot be used to cover the minus on the uh, on the other operation. Due to many margin calls, initial margin is common. And by initial margin, I mean if the credit uh, provided to the counterparties uh, is in the amount of 1 million euro, and if uh, NCBs demands 10% uh, initial margin, that means that uh, counterparty needs to provide 1.1 million euros uh, worth collateral, and the bar is then uh, used uh, to the margin call issue. So if the, the valuation fluctuates uh, over days or over the weeks, uh, uh, it rarely falls under the, the credit value. So what are solution? the solutions? Um, one set uh, is also again uh, the definition of uh, pooling is valid for all monetary credit opera operations, meaning for intra overnight, uh, we call it overnight in the, in the euro system mar marginal lending, uh, financing operations, uh, longer term operations, and, and, and so forth. Uh, new operations, uh, same pool of collateral, no additional actions uh, are needed to be uh, are needed. If there is only uh, sufficient uh, collateral, that is usually the case. If one operation matures, uh, the collateral pool is uh, unbooked. I won't say released, but unbooked. Uh, the the free collateral can be, of course, uh, used for uh, for a new operation or or for or not for claim claim. Sorry, for a credit line. Um, my is issued per total credit and, and total collateral value. So. Uh, with uh, all the credits and we aggregate the, the collateral and if there is uh, um, problem in favor of uh, credit, then we issue a margin call. All accounts, uh, I refer to over collateralization and, and under collateralization uh, with earmarking and initial mar mar margin is theoretically possible but uh, not used in the, the euro system or is set to zero. So see, I kept uh, my so the, the the slide is a bit more uh, colorful. Uh, Slovenia, uh, we have three point uh, three billion uh, uh, collateral, which is huge for us because we are not one of the biggest countries in, in Europe, and thus we had to build a robust and uh, resilient IT system system in house. It's based, based on an Oracle database and has a transactional database for business and a warehouse for the analytical work. Our department uh, drafted the specifications. IT, our own IT department developed the system and then the uh, department tested it extensively uh, internally first externally with uh, counterparties, um, other central banks, the local CSD and the uh, ECB. Uh, um, we move to the picture. The picture is our IT system and the connections to outside uh, system. In the center, you see our IT system. We, uh, in the Euro system, we call it uh, local collateral management system with all modules uh, that support key elements of the collateral management. You can see lots of familiar topics like evaluation, securities, credit claims, uh, corporate actions, uh, compliance, and, and so forth. I would emphasize only two uh, functionalities. The fact that the global position model is at the very top is uh, no coincidence. It works all collateral, uh, the counterparties delivered to Bank Slovenia and all credit that Bank of Slovenia provided to the counterparties in monetary policy framework. 
the module responsibilities uh, that has per second up-to-date information about the collateral taken and about the credit provider. In case there is a mismatch in favor of the, the credit, the margin call is raised. So it's really important that at, at, the, at the, and that in real time we know whether certain uh, counterparty uh, has a margin call or not, and what the, our calculation uh, is, and what is the forecast for the next uh, few days. If there is much, uh, if some assets will mature and so on, so we can call them in advance and check whether uh, they are doing work to uh, to provide additional collateral. The second, uh, the, or the second module is the data warehouse. As it is in different uh, database, the so-called ETL procedure is performed, meaning that the data is extracted from the transactional uh, database, transformed into a, a form that is useful for analysts, and loaded to a uh, data warehouse. So E is for extraction, T is for uh, transformation, and L is for L for loading the data to the data warehouse. From analysts can create the database with uh, their analytical tools like uh, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Access, or it has a, a business intelligence uh, for it. They can use uh, R or any other statistical data uh, package. Whatever. This enables uh, lots of flexibilities uh, as IT development cycles uh, can, very, can be very formalistic and thus um, very long. Uh, on the left of the slide, we can see numerous uh, systems which uh, advantages uh, from. In the past years, uh, uh, the Euro system has built many common uh, systems. Uh, mentioned uh, a module for uh, valuation or for providing uh, theoretical prices. This is called TPH, provided by Banque de France and Bundesbank. I have a box there on, on the left. Um, for instance, um, target two is our RTJS systems. Uh, T2S is a settlement age engine that connects the CSDs uh, of the Eurozone. Um, UCDB is uh, the database where we report um, collateral that is later on disseminated to all central banks. We already uh, talked about the EADB. Uh, yet it's also mentioned then there, and of course at the very top, uh, uh, NCBs, where we communicate uh, our uh, collateral needs, uh, where we process the collateral mobilization, uh, mobilization on a cross-border level. We communicate your system via two networks, if there is pure internal communications, communication, we communicate via the proprietary Eurosystem CoreNet framework. And the uh, counterparties are involved, we communicate to the central banks and to counterparties via SWIFT. On uh, the right side, we can see uh, a box that represents uh, Barcelona's applications for liquidity, pro provide, provision, providing and absorbing oper operations. The operations are tightly connected with the local CMS uh, because uh, before the liquidity is settled, the applications uh, need to check if free collateral is available. And if it is, they have to immediately book it. So applications uh, get uh, uh, the correct information. Last is uh, on the bottom right, and it's of course the most important because if there were counterparties, uh, all our work, work would be in vain. We come the counterparties, as I mentioned before, via Swift. We heavily rely on uh, on Swift. We also have also, uh, we also have a proprietary PKI-based business-to-business interface. Uh, to counterparties uh, where, we all, uh, we, where we primarily exchange uh, files. For instance, uh, when we report collateral positions and we receive credit claims contracts in uh, PDF format. Okay, for the slide. Uh, 
they form domestic securities obligations in accordance with the ISO 15022 standard. ISO 20, ISO 15022 standard defines so-called SWIFT messages, uh, such as uh, empty message uh, 540 for delivery of securities, uh, and, um, message type 542 for deception of security, and message types uh, uh, 544 and my, uh, mess, uh, 546 to confirm the settlements. All messages relate to free of payment workflow that is most common in the collateral uh, world and is also defined by the, uh, the ISO 15022 standard. Uh, to deliver securities either free of payment, uh, delivery versus payment, is that both is sent instructions to the CSD and then the CSD matches the relevant fields such as uh, eyes in phase amount, settlement date, uh, delivery receiving agents, and so on. If all those are equal in both instructions, meaning it has been understood uh, by, by both parties in the same way, then the instructions are, uh, are matched. Uh, the uh, executed on the settlement date, if the instructions are matched and if the collateral giver has enough securities on its account. For this, we want for each uh, counterparty a specific pledge account our local CSD within our CSD membership. I mentioned before this is important for the for the portion of the corporate actions. Okay, five. Minutes. Um, so I'm a bit behind the schedule. I will try to be brief from now on. Um, so go to the steps. And uh, so we really understand what we do at each uh, step that I mentioned uh, uh, on the picture. Step one, counterparty sends the mobilization instructions to Banca Slovenia and so it initiates uh, the mobilization procedures. Step two, Banca validates the instructions, instruction, uh, for instance, whether the instruction is eligible, if the, 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 the format in the instruction is correct, and so on. Uh, step three, uh, Banca Slovenia provides the transaction status. Uh, one, whether, whether the transaction is okay and has been forwarded to the CSD or central bank, or that the transaction uh, has been rejected due to, for instance, in ineligibility of the security or any other issues. Step four, both transactions to, to the CSD Counter, counterparty sends uh, a free of payment delivery free instruction and Banca Slovenia sends free of payment uh, receive free uh, instruction. Step five, as all the actions on the same business day, this essentially matches the instructions and settle, settles uh, them. Uh, this means that it, the, the, the securities are moved from one account to another. Step seven, Banca Slovenia upon the settlement notification evaluates the security and the records records it to the pool of the counterparty. Uh, and final step, Banca Slovenia confirms with the MT544 message that the mobilization process has been successful. So the description of, of the process so we can follow up later on. I will skip the cross-border uh, part because it's only extended, uh, extend, extended from the domestic part. Uh, we have a pre-harmonized uh, approach uh, towards the counterparty uh, for the domestic uh, mobilization and for the cross-border, but there are certain additional um, things that the counterparty has to do because they usually have to forward the instructions to global custodians and uh, cannot uh, instructive with the, their local CSD. Word to the credit claims, as we have a little time, I will not go into uh, detail. We have a two-step approach, credit claim registration and credit claim mobilization. With credit claim registration, 
the key uh, claim data is recorded, for instance, issue date, draw date, amortization plan, entrance, and so forth. And with credit claim mobilization, is this is a step where the, there, there, uh, there is actual pledge uh, recorded on the credit claim. A uh, few words of the, the technical communication. We use uh, SWIFT messages, the MT598s, which are uh, free text, which is uh, Banco Slovenia developed uh, a special format within this free text that the party needs to comply uh, just to, 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 to know a uh, uh, few message types. 100 is for registration, two, 300 is for mobilization, 400 is for demobilization, 200 is for deletion uh, from the registry. We also have some other subs that uh, provide uh, a feedback, like 101 that registration was successful, 109 that registration was uh, rejected, and uh, the same format for our other instructions. Um, outlook for the future, like I already mentioned, uh, uh, has approved uh, uh, three major projects uh, at the market infrastructure uh, level. One of them being uh, ECMS, uh, Euro System Collateral Management System, that is uh, a, a platform, a technical platform that will be used by all central banks and by all counterparties uh, within the Eurozone, uh, and they will uh, mobilize correct collateral in a harmonized way. Why is harmonization so important? We have 19 IT systems for Euro collateral, one at each uh, NCBs. Most collateral is local. Local counterparties, of course, mobilize the local collateral. So there are lots of, lots of uh, um, local specific need to be uh, harmonized. So in a sense, first, central banks have to agree how we will perform, uh, let's say, credit claims mobilization that is completely fragmented uh, in the euro systems. But all at the market level, uh, we will need to agree in, in the eurozone how, for instance, corporate actions, how taxes are treated, uh, and so forth. So for uh, I mentioned before the ISO 15022. Uh, uh, the Eurozone is moving uh, to ISO 20022. Uh, single European payment area is already on, on ISO uh, 20022. Uh, the settlement uh, angel, angel for securities, the so called T2S, has been built on ISO 20022, and so will be the uh, ECMS. So there's a major change for. Uh, for counterparties and for the market to move it from uh, the proprietor, not from, 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 but from existing standards to a new one. Um, it seems that we still have a lot lots of time to do it, but there is lots of work to be done on the harmonization, mar uh, harmonization area, firstly at the NCBs uh, or the central bank level, but also, and here's more tricky because we need to agree with, with them, we, we can't just uh, uh, get a decision from uh, approval of this. We have to agree with the market that harmony uh, uh, done in a, in, a, in a way that will be agreeable with uh, market participants. So this from my side. Uh, thank you for your attention. And if there are any questions, I will be glad to answer. Thank you, Martin, uh, to you as well. Um, we will do this. We'll wait for uh, uh, some time. Whether there are some, there are also some uh, questions. We left off, we left out one of the questions before. Um, uh, it might be that you, Martin, could be also answering it if you can delegate it to uh, to Tilka. Um, it was about. Um, um, uh, it was a question from TJ. Um, Considered the challenge related to post crisis framework, blended collateral framework uh, will be a part of the standard monetary policy to okay. Uh, so yeah. explained. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the, uh, 
a, a discussion or, uh, or the work done how we want to see our future framework. So what we have developed up to now doesn't mean that we'll keep after for the prices area. Okay. So we might make some mistakes or we didn't like certain uh, solutions or they were done in a hurry. So we uh, rethought and uh, agreed in a prob most likely in a different way. Thank you, uh, TJ. Um, uh, also, already uh, thanking uh, for, for the for your answer. Um, another one: um, whether you know procedure within within the bank, uh, who does what when it comes to providing liquidity assistance? Uh, yes, uh, we have internal procedures. So front office will. Uh, A deal, but they will agree with the counterparty how uh, the what amount will be uh, provided. Also, there is an auction process, so there is a front office uh, that uh, deals with uh, with issues like uh, what counterparties can uh, ask for and uh, what amount will be delivered, and so on. And the back office uh, settles. Uh, the payment, uh, the back office uh, check whether there is a sufficient quarrel, and if it it uh, bites uh, the payment to to the uh, to the other party. Uh, the questions organizationally at least. Thank you. If we have uh, maybe a minute or two to. For another question, should there be any? So let's wait. Uh, yeah, I just <laughs> before before uh, concluding uh, to everyone, yes, we will share the presentations. Uh, I will share a bit of information before we conclude as well. Um, uh, so uh, thank you very much, Martin. Thank you to you as well. Um, it was a very very um, um, extensive uh, information, and we'll have a lot of. Uh, materials uh, also to see afterwards. Um, now, Gregor, could you give me the presenting rights um, so I can I can briefly really share a few uh, things. So, um, everyone, just just very briefly, it will take a minute um, um, of your time. Um, we would very much like to ask you to evaluate after this uh, webinar how you felt you will get you will get a, an email from us um, uh, with a survey so please fill it out um, also uh, do you have any other topics that you would like us to cover um, this is very welcome uh, for us to to put in, in our agenda um, together, as I, as I already said, you will have the presentation and we'll share the uh, um, um, recording of this uh, uh, 
webinar today um, online. Um, I would like to uh, welcome you at uh, already um, some events uh, that we are still de delivering at, in uh, this year. Um, um, in two weeks' time, we are w uh, we are actually we're on uh, on the uh, around the weeks we were covering. Um, so we will be tackling payment, payment and settlement systems. We will be discussing also uh, topics like T2S. Uh, um, and uh, I know some of you are also here from the financial supervisory authorities. Maybe you would be also interested in November workshop on, on uh, non-performing loans. Um, so that's all from us. Uh, thank you for your attention and see you next time. Time.